Hi, my name is Pun Shankar and in this video, we will be learning how to create a multiple linear regression model to predict selling price of used cars in Car Deco website. The process of developing a stable model that can predict something is continuous and requires us to first create a base model, then fine tune it and then compare it with other models created by different algorithms. We are going to start with the base in this session and slowly move towards the other phases to develop a model that is stable and then deploy it for consumption. This is the data set that we would be using in this session. It has details of car name, year of manufacture, selling price, present market price, kilometers driven, fuel type, seller type, transmission and owner. I have downloaded this data from Kaglet. I have provided the Kaglet link for this data in the video description. I would be using the Python environment through Anaconda in this session. I would recommend you guys to use the same environment so you can easily follow me through in this video. I have provided the Anaconda download link in the video description for your reference. Before we go ahead and develop the model, let's first create a separate Anaconda environment for this project. This will help a lot while we deploy our model. I'm opening my command prompt and creating a new environment named car product. You would be able to see the default Python libraries in this environment. You can now see a command at the bottom to activate and deactivate the environment. I'm activating the car product environment and navigating into my car prediction project directory. Then I'm opening my Jupyter notebook. This Jupyter notebook could be inside the new environment we created and libraries that would be installed in this environment will stay within this. Now the environment setup is done. Now let's start creating our model. The reason Python is being very famous in the data science world is because of some excellent libraries it has that makes data manipulation work simpler. We would start by importing pandas and seabound libraries and then we will move into the data collection phase. I'm using the read CSV function in pandas to extract the CSV data we have and I am saving it in a variable named df. The output of this activity makes the variable a data frame. While this session is focused on taking you through the end-to-end -end journey of developing a real-world multiple linear regression without going into much details, I will continue to emphasize terms and areas that needs further exploration from you guys. Data frame is one such thing you guys should research and understand more. I'm now using head function in pandas to look at a sample of our data. We can see all the columns in our data. Here, selling price is the column we would be trying to predict. Then, I'm using the shape command to see the shape of my data. I can see that there are 301 rows and 9 columns in our data. Now, I'm using the info function in pandas to get an overview of the data we have. We can see the column names, non-null count and data types. An important observation is that there are no missing values as we can see all the columns have 301 records. Looking into the column and its data type, I would like to understand the values in the categorical variables more. So what I want to do is to print the unique values of the categorical variables which has object data type like fuel type seller type, transmission, and owner. Though the owner is having int data type, I'm still trying to take it as the categorical variable because it is just the number of owners that is represented as integers. We are able to see the unique values in the column. I'm now going to remove the car name column because it is just a data identifier. Now we will pre-process the data to make it ready for model building. One new feature I think will help us in predicting the selling price is age of the car. I'm creating a new column called present year and assigning 2020 to it. Then I'm subtracting the year from the present year to create a new feature called age year. If we look at the data using the head function, we would be able to see the newly created column. I'm using the drop function in pandas to remove year and present year columns. The in place is equal to true argument 
will make the drop operation reflect in the data frame directly. Let's look at the data and we can see that columns are removed. Now the data we have needs to be encoded in the forms of zeros and ones to be fed into the algorithm. So I'm using get dummies function and now if we look at the data we are able to see the data is encoded as required. Finally I'm removing the y variable selling price and saving it to a new data frame df underscore required underscore x which will have all our x variables. Before we use this data into our algorithm, let's first check if there is any outliers and if there is any, we will have to take a call on it. I would be using the z square from skypy.stats library for performing this. You guys can research into this to understand more about z squares and other techniques that is used for identifying outliers. I'm finding the z square of selling price and storing it into a column called z score underscore sp and then filtering records with z scores greater than 3.0 and less than minus 3.0. We would be able to see a list of records that has been identified as an outlier. Let's plot it in a box plot to see it visually. I'm importing matplotlib library and then creating a box plot on selling price. We would be able to see the box plot and the circles representing outliers. Now we can go into these outliers and investigate it to understand if it can be removed. In this case, I'm not going to remove these outliers. Let's now check for the presence of multicollinearity. Existence of high correlation between independent variables is called multicollinearity. Presence of multicollinearity can destabilize regression models. So, it is important to identify multicollinearity in, in data and remove them appropriately. I am using the figure and head map function in matplotlib library to plot correlation between independent variables in a heat map. If we look at the heat map, we can see that there is only one case where the correlation number is high that is between fuel type petrol and fuel type diesel. But I am not going to remove it for now. Having said that, the general approach is to evaluate which variable among the two can be removed from a business perspective and then remove it from the data set. What we regard as high correlation is totally based on the use case. Generally, variables having correlation more than 0 0.70 are investigated. Now let's split our data into train and test. For this, I'm importing statsmodel.api library. I'm assigning the independent variables in the data to x and the dependent variables to y. I'm using the sklearn library to import train test split function. I'm using unpacking functionality in Python to split the data using the train test split function. I have given a train size of 0.8 which means 80% of our data would be training and 20% for validation. Let's go ahead and create our model now. I would be using the OLS method which is ordinary least square for developing our model. I am passing the training variable and using the fit function to first fit the model to the training data. Then I am looking into the model summary. What you see here is a speciality of multiple linear regression. While the machine learning algorithms are majorly driving the data science industry, a statistical model like MLR gives us a lot of inference into the data. I'm going to point out some of the inferences in this model. The asquoid value which you see here ranges from 0 to 1. It explains the percentage of variation in Y, which is selling price in this case, that is explained by the model. The more R square is, the better is the model. We have an R square of 0 0.90, which is pretty good. But when the R square is very high, it may be also influenced by multicollinearity. If you can recollect, we looked at the multicollinearity between fuel type diesel and fuel type petrol. Though in this example, I'm showcasing the basics of how to go about creating an MLR model. You can play with it by removing one of the features causing multicollinearity and see how the model works. 
Next, we are able to see all the features and their respective p-values. p-value less than 0.05 means the variable is significant to the model. We can see few features are significant and few are not. Another important thing to notice the coefficient value and its signs. This tells us how these features influence the selling price. For example, we can see that the kilometers driven has a negative sign, which means it is inversely proportional. That is, as the kilometers driven value goes down, the selling price goes up. Similarly, for age underscore year, as the age of the car is lesser, the selling price is more. Consider the present price. It is directly proportional. That is, if the present price is more, then the selling price would also be more. Now, I am just taking only the significant variables and saving it to a new variable. I am filtering only those variables in the training data and then fitting it again. Now in the summary, we can see that there is one other feature that is not significant. So I again remove it and form the model. Now we have our model. Let's validate and perform model diagnosis to understand if the model can be useful. The reason we do it is because statistical modeling techniques like multiple linear regression are based on certain statistical assumptions. If these assumptions are not satisfied, then the model cannot be reliable. There are two major checks for this. One is to check for normal distribution of residuals and the second is a test of homocedasticity. I would recommend you guys to take a deeper look into these concepts to understand it in depth. Let's first plot a PP plot. At an overview level, if the residuals are normally distributed, then the blue line and the red line should be close to each other. Now, we will look into the test of homocedasticity. For this, we will first need to standardize the value, which is nothing but bring the values in a single scale. I'm using the scatter plot to check homocedasticity. So the result should be no presence of pattern in this scatter plot. We can see the scatter plot is concentrated at a particular area but doesn't have a pattern. But in ideal cases, the scatter plot points could be further scattered apart, suggesting no pattern. Finally, we will now make predictions. I'm using the predict function in our model to predict the values. Now, we will look at the RMSE value, which is root mean square error value, and then the R square of predicted value. We can see the R square has decreased, which means the model can be improved further by deriving extra features like what we did for eight years. I will leave it up to you to further improve this model by coming up with new derived columns of your choice. Let's create a distribution plot on the difference between the predicted values and actual value. We can see a normal distribution which is good, but, but there is a lot of scope to improvement. I'm plotting a scatter plot between the actual value and predicted value to see how it is aligned. And we can see that the graph is linear, but as the values increases, the prediction accuracy goes down. There are several methods that can be done to fine-tune this model. In the subsequent videos, we will continue to fine-tune this base model and then step by step we will see how to form a stable model and deploy it for consumption. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Stay connected by subscribing my channel to dive into more details and learn more together. Please give a thumbs up and share if you have liked this video. Also, please comment below for any questions in this video and I will do my best to help you guys out.